Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Tuesday, and it is January 19th, and this will be our chart lesson for today. And last week, I forgot to remind everybody that Monday was uh, Martin Luther King Day, so a uh, holi uh, trading holiday, so no trading yesterday, obviously. You probably figured that out. I did have a few people comment they couldn't figure out why the volume was so low. Uh, normally, I'll remind you about those ahead of time, but I... I it just slipped my mind. I forgot all about it um, until the next, till Saturday. I thought about it on Saturday. And so uh, normally I'll try to remind you if it's going to be a trading holiday or whatever. But uh, yeah, no trading yesterday. So obviously that's why you didn't see a chart lesson. Uh, not many trades today. This is a lot of sideways stuff. And you can see, you know, we kind of, what, this has kind of been the MO lately. We do get some trends like this. Of course, this is overnight trading. Uh, some of this was from yesterday. This is where today started. So we kind of continued that trend on up, but we kind of spurt up or down and we go sideways and then we kind of drop down and go sideways and then we move up and really we're still going sideways here, but then you see, we get another little trend up and then we just go sideways again. So that's kind of been the MO where we get these little moves and then sideways and then a move, it could be up or down. And that's really what we saw today. And there just weren't a whole lot of opportunities, uh, good setups to enter. Uh, it's a little dangerous trying to, I mean, you can't go short right here and there's no real long setup. So there's just no real comfortable way or safe way, I should say, to catch this move down. And then you get the same thing right here. You move up and it, you just, you really don't want to go long right in here, but there's no good short setups. And so you're just kind of stuck. Um, you just kind of have to ride this out. And there's no real good way to enter it. And it's unfortunate. So you're not going to see a lot of trades. This won't take long today. Um, so I'm going to go over the trades. And, and, and there's not a lot of, I mean, there's not anything really uh, a good learning opportunity other than to understand when you you know, if you don't get a good entry at the right place, you just can't enter. This is where you have to be real. A day like this, you've got to be really patient or you're going to have some losers. And I'm sure there's a bunch of you out there that had a lot of losers today. And it uh, doesn't mean that you can't find a trade. And, there, and there's some that you could probably argue for in here other than the ones I marked. But generally, I'm going to mark the consistently good trades, blue or red. And if you see one that's marked green... Uh, of course, the entry is, if the green arrow is pointing down, the entry is down. And if the green arrow is pointing up, the entry is up. But if it's green, it simply means that it's it meets our criteria, but it's a relatively aggressive trade. And you probably want to be a seasoned, experienced chart reader to maybe even understand what it is. And, and so anytime you see these trades, if you see a green one that you don't quite understand, don't don't beat yourself up trying to figure it out. Just move on because with time and more experience, it'll make more sense to you. So anyway, let's um, let's back out. You can see it's just a range day. And there's probably a bigger pattern here. And somebody asked me this today on the forum, actually. Uh, they asked me why I wouldn't draw this as a two-tiered channel. Because really, you got a channel, a tier up here, and then you drop down. You see my measured move here. And... Um, if you put your line across there, we actually went a little further, but you can see basically prices bounced in there. And, and they really, they asked me, why wouldn't I draw this as a two tiered channel? Well, when we started this this morning, you can see there's not two tiers. So I drew it like this. And then once we start going lower, I just measure, you know, I get a measured move and I look for that should be, get you really close. And you can see that it does where the next one bounced. And I drew it in two tiers because I didn't draw it as a two tier channel, but rather two separate t channels because it was, this was a separate channel and this was a separate channel. So that's why I didn't draw that as two tiers. Um, if that person watches the video today, uh, hopefully that uh, better explains it to them. Uh, but I, I believe they asked me that question in the forum today. And I, so that was, it's a good question, but that's why, because I, I'm just trying to show you how to do it in real time. And sure, I could have just drawn this as a two-tiered channel and left it, and it would probably work. But nobody's going to learn how to figure out where prices are going from this channel down to here and find your measure move. So I'm trying to teach you how to do it. So that's why I drew it the way I draw it. And I hope that makes sense. So um, 
but yeah, we're still doing the $10 a month. So if any of you, anybody that wants to just join the uh, forum, I've got it dirt cheap, $10 a month. And uh, I keep, it's, it's uh, the only reason I charge anything for the forum is because we want to control it, who can come in and who can come out. And, you know, we want to keep the troublemakers out. We don't want any people in there teaching anything, but our strategy or trying to add to it or take away. And so to control it, we charge a small amount and, 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 you know, if you can't afford $10 a month, you can't afford to trade anyway. So, um, I hate that I have to charge for it, but it's, it's just, you know, I'm not charging a lot of money. So, uh, $10 a month, but my, my, you know, my teenage daughter could afford that. So, uh, most anybody can afford that. And the idea is not to make money off of it, but just to make it to be able to control it. And uh, if you're charging, you can do that. So if it's free, then anybody and their brother can come in and out. And we like to keep our stuff behind lock and key just so we can keep it pure and keep things on track and make sure people are learning the right things. Because I, prior to doing our own forum, I was truly against forums because you're not going to learn anything good there. If you go to most of these forums, it's, you know, you got these know-it-alls that think they know and they teach all this stuff and they spew all this stuff out and 90% of people in there think they're gods and that think that everything they say is right and 90% of what they say is just wrong. And we don't want that in our forum and that way I can control it and make sure that people do share the proper message and if they're not, we put them on track. And But for the most part, people that are going to answer your question are going to either tell you they don't know and give you their opinion or they're going to give you a good answer. So, um, but anyway, if you want to join, you can still join for $10. I don't know how long we'll do it at that price. Uh, technically we originally set it up where you had to be part of our premium membership, but I wanted to open the forum up to others and make it affordable. So we came up with this option where you can just join nothing but the forum for $10 a month. And that way you can get the support and help and learn more without uh, having to spend any real money. So, there it is. But anyway, let's let's talk about the trades. And we'll back out here where we can see it a little bit better. And you can see there's a lot of greens and there's a lot. I mean, just like this morning, you didn't get a really good trade till 9 o'clock. So you got to be able to sit here patiently for two hours if you start at 7 like me. So, uh, although I may take more of these green ones, some of you probably won't and so just you know you just understand that you got to be patient if you want to be a profitable trader you got to be patient you can't chase every swing and look for a, an entry on every bar and every swing really what we're doing is we want to find the key entry points where are the key entry points it's these angled trend lines it's this flat horizontal support and resistance and occasionally uh minor key entry points are the ema and um the midlines that come in the middle here there the ema and the midline are what i call minor key entry points you usually want to see them proven multiple times before you trust them and then it still has to be in the right context of course but just understand that it's all about the support and resistance and these and all a trend line is is no different than this support and resistance right here except it's just angled that's I mean, what prices do is they bounce back and forth between support and resistance. And here you can see we had an overshoot, which usually leads to a, uh, a reversal or at the very minimum of a correction pretty, pretty soon. And you can see it wasn't long. We got a correction on the other side of the channel. Prices tried to move to a new high and reversed. And really what was going on right here is notice that this was the highs of yesterday right across here. And notice we opened way up here at 8.30. Now, again, on a normal chart, you wouldn't have all this gray in trading in here. Technically, actually from yesterday, actually I take that back. Uh, I really was looking at this. I didn't really count this as yesterday's trading. So this was where the gap was that I was looking at and somebody asked me about that in the forum and I probably didn't explain that well enough because you can see we did close somewhere right in here yesterday and we probably didn't quite fill that gap but because that was a holiday I didn't really count it I looked at this as the highs and we opened up here 
And notice we came back just enough here to fill that. If you put the line on here, you can, let me put a line on here where you can see it. Since we got a little extra time, this is a good learning opportunity. You can see we easily filled that gap because here's today's price action. But here's where we open. And you can see from up here to down here, there's a gap because this wouldn't be there on a daily chart. And this wouldn't be there on the daily chart, but this would be. So that's the gap we're looking to fill. And so I hope that makes sense. And uh, so prices, what prices were doing, they were coming back to fill the gap. And once they filled that gap and these prices, these two bars are overlapping, then they go higher again. I actually got stuck in this little range and you had a little failed breakout that led to this big move up. So... Anyway, let's talk about the trades and wrap this up. Let me get this off the chart. Seven o'clock came right in here where this is setting up. And notice you got a new high here. This is basically a new high double top. So first entry, second entry, it fails. Gives you a ni nice bearish bar. It actually breaks uh, higher first, comes down. Just go short right there. Uh, the reason I made this one green is because it is in the middle of what looks like a range. And that's kind of where prices tend to, you could see, you could get chopped up there. So it's a little aggressive. Um, but hopefully the trap will at least push you to a scalp, even if we're not going to the lows. But we just came off the highs. And with that trap, you would expect it to try to t test these lows. And so the key would be, do you have enough room to scalp out before these lows right here? And notice that's where we bounced. And you could have easily gotten out of that one. Uh, then we come back up here. Now we make a triple test. We tested this. We made the high. We test it once. We test it twice. And this is a big, the, the reason again, this one's green is because it's just such a big bar. It's a second entry short too, because this is a, a, new, a new low right here. So first entry, second entry. Uh, this one's too bullish, so you can't use that. So this has to be your signal bar. And it's just such a big bar that, it's right in the middle of the range again. Uh, there is a failed breakout there, though, and sometimes that leads to a big move. Uh, unfortunately, you wouldn't have caught a runner on this one, so it didn't matter anyway. But uh, it's good for a scalp. There's a lower high here. Uh, if this would have broke higher right here and, and then we broke down, there's a second entry short there either way, but there's just a little bit of congestion in the middle of a range into the above the EMA into it. Nah, it's just too much support right there. It works, but and like I said, you can't do anything here. You can't go long or short in there. It's just nothing. There's clues here that we're probably going lower, but I don't see any reason. There's no way to get short in here on a good safe entry. But the clues are is notice how each time prices came back here, they're making a lower high. That's telling you that prices are losing steam to the upside. And notice how we pushed through here a little bit too first. Notice there's no closes below that line anywhere till right in here. And you're making those lower highs. And then suddenly, boom, people realize, hey, we're going lower. Now, there is a new swing high right here. So your count's over. So you're moving down. You get a first entry and a second entry. And it fails. It's right at the midpoint. And the big thing is there's we tried to go higher one, two, three times. This is the fourth time. And this breaks higher first. And I guarantee it traps a lot of longs and then turns down. So when it goes out that other side, I like going short there just to ride that trap. It's a little aggressive. It is at the midline, but you don't have a, you haven't tested that midline from underneath very often. So that's not going to be real reliable. But because it's a trap and all everything else is going on, we don't quite have a measured move down. We're close, but I think there's room for more down movement there. And as long as you got room to get out before here and here, and you may take that trade. Then we just start going sideways again. Here you you would expect expect we may get a reversal. But that's your first break. We got a new low, but sometimes you get two legs down, and of course you do here. There is a trap right here. I didn't mark this one. It's also a second entry short. Uh, but notice from the top side you get a first entry, second entry. I I meant to mark that one green. I did not mark it. But I, I meant to come back and mark it and just never did got around to it. But I like that one for a possible. Again, I'm going to make it green because it, it's kind of in the middle there. But it's a possibility. 
But when we drop on down and then you get a triple test here or a double test is what it's really, because you make that low, you test it once, you test it twice. And nice bullish bar. Um, I like going long there. I really thought we'd take off this time and go back higher. But we didn't, but it's an easy scalp. And that's why we scalp out because sometimes prices don't do what we think. But it meets our entry criteria. It's a good trade, good signal bar. We turn down again. Again, this is a um, two bar matching high. So you could use this bar and call this a lower high. Uh, but I really would want to see it come back and test it again. But that's another one that you could argue to be green. There's, there's several of them in here that you could argue to be green. And that turns out to be a really nice move. But I'd like to see uh, another little move up or maybe that break higher first and then turn down. And, of course, you can't go short down here and there's no long setup. And we're just chopping around here. Possible little tra trend channel working up. But you get a close outside new high. And look how... When prices break out of here, what are you expecting to happen? Prices should, will probably fail and come back and test. Even if we're going higher, they'll probably fail and come back and test this. But they're probably just going to fail, just like they did. And so when you get this lower high and a fairly good signal bar that far away from the EMA, I like going short there. And if you catch this trade, depending on how you play it and how you're runner works out you may ride it all the way down but then you get a second entry short right here i didn't like this one it, it's right off the key entry point which is that trend line it is a second entry short but it's a little bit congestive so it's not a perfect setup we do come back here with a lower high but now you've overshot the other side and just bounced off the middle this is another one that you could probably um you might say, hey, I want to enter that. But the problem is, is, this is an inside bar. This is really your signal bar. And as good as that looks at the highs of this range, you need to wait on a, another entry. And by the time it comes, now we're right in the middle again. And it's just it's just not a safe entry entering right there. And I didn't mark that one. And because you're going, you are going short off that key entry point, but you've already had a break and you're almost have a new low, even though there's probably a good chance we're going to the lows of the range the range may win out um you're still going short right into that low and you may say hey well maybe the lows down here and maybe it is but you're not bouncing as much if you if you look at it right here you get more touches there and you can see how it's kind of bouncing off that from both sides the closes fit so i believe that to be it and this drops on down and now we get a failed break out the lower side and notice what happens. What's probably going to happen on a failed breakout, it's going to fail and come back in, even if only temporarily before it goes lower. Most likely it'll fail. This is what usually happens. It turns out to be like up here. This was a temp. It was just a momentarily, but it was an important high because look how we traded down. Now you're going to get an important low. And look, that was the. these are the kind of moves you want to catch. But notice that new low. You try to go lower once. Then you try to go lower twice. That's a failed second entry short. And look how far it is back to the, oops, back to the EMA. Just go long one tick above that. Boom, off it goes. And then again, you can't go short here right back into that support. I keep clicking everything, but what I want to click here. Um, you don't want to go short back into those lows. And you might go long here with that little trout. Again, I didn't mark it. Uh, but it's another one you could argue that might be green. It's just not a perfect setup, but hey, you might take it. And you could really, there's a new swing low, so you really could count that as a first entry. And then it's just a little two bar matching high, so it doesn't really make a higher low to call that a true failed second entry short. But you got a little double bottom with a two bar matching low. I don't know if you can see that. And we break lower and turn back up. And you don't have much room back to the EMA or the trend trend channel, although that trend line is probably out of play now. And so the better entry is here. But if, if you want to be aggressive, and you see by being a little bit aggressive here, you easily get a runner on that one. And we work on up. We come back to the trend line here, but there's no setup. It's just congestion uh, sideways. You come back here. Again, you get a first entry here, but the fact that we didn't get back to the high before we turned down 
that make you really need to wait on a higher low or a second entry. You do get a higher low here, but now you're going long at the high of the day. And finally, you get a second entry long right here. Notice you're coming down. You get a first entry, then you go lower again, and you get a second entry here. Um, and you get a good signal bar. There's a higher low here, but now you're back at the very highs of that um, that little. It looks like it looks like we're starting to go sideways here. Of course, we haven't turned down here yet, but still, you want to be careful going long right there. So I don't. I think it's too risky after we've already had a break. And then we're just chopping around here in this range. We do get a failed break lower, but no setup here. And then that takes us into 2 o'clock. And um, there's not really a good short here either. This is a lower high. And it did go higher first and turn down right there. So that's that's another one. You could argue for it to be green uh, that late in the day. I'm not crazy about it. So it was really a kind of a quiet, slow day. They just had to be super patient. And this is where so many traders get tripped up because they can't be patient. They can't wait, and they're constantly scanning for an entry, and then they just finally take a stab in the dark, and they throw a dart at a board, and most of the time they're going to be wrong because there's not a lot of entries here, and a lot of them are going to fail. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, hope you had a good three-day break there, another three-day break, uh, three-day weekend, and um, you know I usually take those off. They're not worth trading for sure. You might, If you're new and you're wanting to get better at this, you might use it for a study time and chart study and all that but for me it's time to get a break and for you know if you start doing this and trading every day over time you start to look forward to those three three day weekends and the holidays and stuff like that um, I know it's still exciting and new and you want to trade all the time when you're new to this and you, you hate when the markets close but you'll get to a point where you won't feel that way at some point so anyway I'm not going to ramble on I'm going to wrap it up this is Mac with priceactiontradingsystem.com and we'll see you next time.